Hello and welcome to Skitty Animate. I'm Skitty and today I present to you the biggest project ever for me. As I'm sure you can tell from the title, I took on Animator Island's 51 animation exercises to make you a better animator, but with a twist. I'll leave a link below in case you want to check out the exercise for yourself, but in case you weren't familiar, Animator Island designed these 51 animation exercises to start from very basic and work its way up in complexity to challenge your animation skills. According to them, by the end of it, you should become a better animator. But if I was to just do these exercises, that wouldn't be very interesting for you guys. So I upped the ante. I did all 51 animations using the flower sack rig. This little guy is so adorable, and his rig is extremely simple, and he's free. I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to download him for yourself. The point of using the flower sack rig is because he's extremely simple. Quite often I hear complaints that certain actions can't be done because of a limitation with the rig, but today I'm here to prove to you that you aren't limited by your rig, your rig is limited by you. So without further ado, let's get into it. To start, we have the absolute basic yet extremely important ball bounce. It's very easy to make the flower sack do a ball bounce because he's basically a ball with little arm flappies. Ever hear of a little thing called motion paths? I hate them with a passion, but I have to admit, they made light work of this one. I made a tutorial in the past on motion paths, so I'm not going to get into it here, but I'll link it below if you'd like to check it out. This one took a bit of a reference study. If I would have animated this without a reference, I probably would have treated it a lot heavier than it actually is, and I wouldn't have even thought to put a little bounce after the contact. I'm clearly lacking in my brick knowledge. This one was just a calm head turn, nothing excited. Waiting for the bus seemed to fit the bill perfectly. This one is where the excitement is called for. Antic up, break down down, and then settle the arc. Can we watch this one again? It's my absolute favorite. It kills me every time I watch it. I hope that's not just me. Anyways, I'm sure most people would look at this prompt and say, flower sacks can't blink, they don't have eyes. But how about looking at what he does have, which is his arm nubbins. He's got all the mechanics of a blink. He's perfect, don't judge him. Okay, maybe I didn't have any ideas for a scene set up on this one. Let's ignore that. The thinking part, it exists. It's there. It works. Next. Making a flower sack wave is pretty simple since he doesn't have a whole arm to worry about. Just add some secondary animation on his hand so that it flows like seaweed and you're golden. Flower sack jumping, all bounce, what's the difference? They're heavy, they're squishy, and they plop. For a cartoony feel, I made him deflate a little bit on the way down so that he could inflate on the way up. Very subtle though. All the same mechanics a human would have, but on a smaller character. So long as you pose from reference to get the gist of it, you can take some creative liberties to make it work on differently proportioned characters. Maybe I'm cruel, but this one was fun. I went for a comedic approach, but made sure the character pantomimed a clear emotional shift before the funny bit. When characters don't have faces, that means that you really have to play up their emotions in their posing and their line of action. Character jumping over a gap? Sounds like Mario. Why not just make a Mario? I could have went for a more realistic approach and made him climb down the chair, but a cartoony character like this may as well work smarter, not harder, and animate him like a cartoon.
Walk cycles are typically pretty boring, so I thought maybe Breath of the Wild would spruce it up a bit. Did it work? Three, two, ready? I don't know why pogo stick was the one that I put so much effort in, but here we are. I had a blast making this one. In Maya, all I did was animate a pogo stick cycle and render out the loop. Then I found some footage from F-Zero, and in Premiere, I mimicked the ship's rotations as transforms on the flower sack. Then I rotoscoped the ship out on every frame. Easy peasy. <laughs> Laughing is hard on a regular character, so it's crucial that you nail the pantomiming on a faceless one. Lots of belly wiggles. On a real sneeze, the face scrunches up, lunges forward, and then settles. So that's what the pantomime has to do. Don't break the model when you're reaching, just show the struggle. Have a slow gain, and then add some translation noise to show the buildup. Smears are so much fun. They're snappy and have a big cushion on each side of the transition. I've already talked about smears in the past, so I'll put a link down below if you're unsure about them. Yoga is a good place to look for reference on breathing. The breath in is a tense buildup, and the breath out is a slow, relaxing release. I think the flower sack makes a mighty good tree. I'm not well versed in falling trees, so I watched reference pretty closely for this one. Just like the brick, I wouldn't have thought to put a bounce after the initial hit. Flower sack, sandbag, same thing, right? Just like the walk cycle, runs are boring. All cycles are boring to watch, really. If you can think of a way to make it interesting, do it. Fists are hard to look right, but the simplicity of the flower sack rig really worked in my favor on this one. I plan to dedicate a video in the future just to posing a fist, but for now, just make sure you don't leave this part of the fingers flat. Might have skipped over the word small on this prompt. Definitely watch or create your own reference for this one. Making something look heavy in a space where gravity doesn't exist is tough. Most of these examples have already had secondary animation in them because I consider it a crucial part of the polish phase. So at that point, it became clear, we need a sexy slow-mo flower sack. Uh, I think this one pretty much explains itself. Flower Sack is the true artist of the Mona Lisa. He's just shy. The mechanics on this one are fairly simple. Big wind up, snap the hammer down, repeat. I mean, he doesn't have a mouth. Why was he trying to eat soup?
basically a level two of the deep breathing exercise. Mechanics are the same, but it's faster and there's no relaxing on the way out. For juggling, you're gonna wanna animate the arc of the balls before you even consider the character. Once they move in a smooth arced circle, you can attach the hands to the action. <sighs> Flower sack ended up in Yakuza. I'd be scared too if I was him. This is basically a level 2 version of the thinking exercise. Really have to sell that the gears are turning in his brain. This is where it becomes apparent that these exercises were designed for 2D animators. I don't have a jacket rig, so I made the flower sack a jacket. The animation isn't perfect, but it's enough to get the idea across. Another example of how you have to use your imagination. Flower Sack can't lick the envelope, but if he had a cup of water, he could still get the job done. So I might have been addicted to Animal Crossing New Horizons since launch, and I've been wanting to animate something in the Animal Crossing style. So for reference, I sat Animal Crossing Skitty down on a bench and had her jump off the bench over and over and over again until I understood it enough to replicate it with the flower sack. I think he fits into the world quite well. This was the only way I knew how to get through such a boring prompt. I get it, it really makes you think about what the character would do and how they would do it, because waiting for an elevator is a boring task where you don't move around a whole lot. The flower sack wasn't an issue for this one at all, but being motivated enough to actually animate it was another story. This was one of the prompts I was most excited for. Yes, a flower sack can't technically eat a cupcake, but what can he do? He can bash his face into it. Just add a little squash on the cupcake when his face makes contact and you're done. This was my first time ever trying to generate water in Maya, and I'm a little disappointed I thought the splash would be a little bigger when he hit the water, but that's something I'll have to play around with in the future so I can learn. I used this prompt as an excuse to learn something new. This function isn't yet available in Maya 2019, so I cracked open 2016, and I recorded my mouse to be used as animation for the rope. Both flower sacks were already constrained to the rope, so they moved on their own. Fun times with constraints. Each card had its own constraint on his left hand, and each constraint got switched off when the other hand flicked it. Constraints aren't scary, you just have to learn how they work. This was my second attempt at trying to record my mouse movements for animation data, and I think this one turned out a lot better. The only recorded part was the brushing motion on his hand, and then I manually animated the rest of his body to match it. This one was a frame-by-frame -frame copy of my reference footage. I deleted the flower sack rig, just the rig, and I attached him to a motion path. Then I put a lattice on the flower sack. That way I could animate the lattice points for the paper bends. I hope that by this point, this animation screams motion path to you, because that's all it needed. We already had the run cycle from an earlier prompt, so all I had to do was attach him to the motion path and then make sure that his body is rotating accordingly.
This one was pretty fun. I made a breathing cycle and then interrupted that cycle for him to be startled by the clock and then right back into the breathing cycle because the flower sack does not wake up that easy. The one thing that I want to say about this prompt, because I see it in new animators' work all the time, when a character opens a door, or in this case a cupboard, the door needs to have an ease on the end of its action. When a door comes to a dead stop, it feels like it's hitting a brick wall. Being honest, I was afraid of this prompt. How can a flower sack possibly pull this off in 3D? But that was just my brain trying to limit the rig. Putting on pants actually turned out to be quite simple. I found a model of a pair of jeans and I threw a five by five by five lattice on it. Then I was able to animate the lattice points. For starters, I flattened the pants and then I had them tug when the flower sack grabbed the corner. After that, it was just deforming them to fit around his waist. It ended up being a lot more fun than I was expecting. For this one, I watched videos of kids opening presents on Christmas. Kids always have the most genuine, no-filter emotions. When it came time to animating, I knew I had to do a slow build-up to allow the flower sack time to process what he's seeing, get excited, and then snappy actions from there to the end. From the very beginning, I knew that this is the prompt that I wanted for the heavy versus light character. The biggest difference between light and heavy when it comes to this specific type of action is the key's spacing. The light characters will have a lot more frames between their keys than the heavy ones. And there you have it, 51 animation exercises using only the flower sack. Do you think I became a better animator by the end of it? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I think so, because I learned how to think outside the box more, and I learned a few new Maya tricks along the way. So the next time you think your character can't do something, rewatch this video, and then maybe you'll come up with some ideas on how they can. Focus on what they have rather than what they don't have. There will be links in the description for the flower sack rig and the animation exercises if you want to check them out yourself, and I will pin a comment below for reference footage for each of these prompts if you need it. I can't believe we're finally seeing the end of this project. It's been quite a trip and I hope you enjoyed it. As always, leave a comment below if there's something you didn't understand. Like and subscribe if you learned something. Links to socials are in the description and remember to always use a reference.